welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how I make my bunny ear teething rings. These are a fab, quick, <laughs> the word is quick, gift to make for sort of any emergency baby gifts. They're also great for um, selling if you're doing craft fairs. Um, I've left this one attached to my packaging so you can see how I did this. Um, when I'm selling them, not that I do craft fairs anymore, but when I was, I had them in a cellophane self-sealed pack to keep them nice and clean. So you can see like the cellophane takes quite a battering, but the ears inside stay nice and clean and you can pop in all your tags and information inside. So quite a lot of people often ask me about how I used to do my packaging. Um, this, as you can see, is really simple. It's just like craft card. So I made in Photoshop um, a little template where I put all my information. Um, I'm in the UK, so I had to CE mark and certify my toys and makes. Um, obviously, I don't sell any more. And um, I believe the rules have changed slightly. So if you were making these bunny ears and you're here in the UK, you actually need to secure them with a stitch now, um, which back when I was making these, um, it wasn't clear. Um, a whole load of us had um, were talking about bunny ear teethers and things. Um, over on the CE support network on Facebook, it's a group. So I'll actually link to that below because if you are in the UK and you're looking to make baby things and toys for selling, CE marking is a legal requirement. You have to have tested your toys. But uh, in that group, when we were originally were doing these, um, I think the lady who supplies these teething rings, um, the wooden section, she actually... Um, highlighted later on on got some clarity about how you need a stitch anyway i'm divulging no one needs to know all that information basically for my packaging <laughs> not that i've gone wildly off tangent for my packaging i print it off at home on my home printer so i make this little just little template in photoshop print it on this wooden card and then i pierce a couple of holes and just tie it tie it on so and then pop it in the cellophane bag Right, that aside, what you need for making these teething rings is you need, obviously, a wooden teething ring. Um, I get mine, um, or used to get mine, from Tactile Treasures. That's a lady who I was just prattling on about from the CE group. I'll link to her website for, again, if you're in the UK, but wherever you are in the world, I'm sure you can pick up natural wooden, uh, these ones are tested, but wooden teething rings. You need these. Um, to attach your ears to. I use uh, for making mine um, three bears yarn. It's 100%. I use Aran cotton. Um, it's a UK brand. And uh, this is the reason I use this. And I would also occasionally use uh, Stylecraft cotton is because, again, coming back to the CE marking, which isn't applicable for 99% of you out there watching this, um, this yarn is certified. It's chemically certified. So um, Three Bears Yarn actually supply the certificates when you purchase their yarn. So this is why I, I use theirs. And it's actually quite a nice stiff cotton, this one, which is perfect for a teething ring. Obviously, they're going to get drooled on and crunched and all sorts. So they're going to take a lot of abuse. So you can see it's quite stiff cotton and it really holds its shape. If you can't get hold of the Three Bears Yarn, um, another substitute, as I mentioned, is the Stylecraft Cotton Classic. Um, it doesn't come in 100 gram balls anymore. Uh, I think they only do it in a 50 gram size ball, but I mean, you don't need 100 grams to make this tiny little teething ring. You just need a scrap. So if you can't use either of these, any 100% cotton will do. So you can pick your crochet hook to for whatever yarn weight you're using. Um, I'm just using a four millimeter crochet hook for this. And another thing you're gonna need is a large eye needle and some scissors. And that's it really. It is a quick make. It'll probably take you quicker, it's quicker to make than it is to sit and listen to me waffling on all my nonsense. So as always, links to everything I have mentioned is in the description box below. Um, I haven't actually got a written pa pattern on my blog. Um, I might rectify that. If you see a link to my blog 
in this description box below. It means I actually bothered to write one down and I've posted it up there for you and therefore what I've just said is null and void. But at the moment, I haven't actually got the written pattern on my blog. But at some point in the future, I will. So hello, future people. <laughs> I wrote it, I posted it. So that's it. I'm prattling nonsense now. So I'll shut up and get on and show you how you make these super cute bunny ear teething rings. So with your cotton yarn uh, double knit weight for the purposes of this tutorial, I am using Tropical Jade. You want to chain three. I'm using a four mil hook, as I mentioned, Just focusing in my intro. So you want to chain three. So pop a slip knot on your hook. And chain three and then into the second chain from your hook so not this one this one here we're going to pop a single crochet and then a single crochet in that last chain right by your slip knot there chain one turn and then you're going to increase into both these single crochets that you've just done. So an increase is two single crochet in the same stitch. So you're going to pop two single crochet in that first one, and then two single crochet into your second one, and you'll have four stitches. Chain one, turn your work, and you're going to put a single crochet in each one of those four single crochet you just did. So just one in each, and you'll have four single crochet again. Chain one, turn. Now you're gonna put an increase into this first single crochet here. So that's two single crochet into the same stitch. And then a single crochet into the next. Single crochet into the next. And then end on another increase. So by the end of this row, you will have six stitches. Chain one, turn. Now you're going to sit, put a single crochet in each one of those six stitches that you just did. So just all the way along, one single crochet in each of those six stitches. My yarn's got a knot in here. There it is. Freedom. Chain one, turn. Then you're going to put an increase into your first stitch, which is two single crochet into the same stitch. And then a single crochet in the next four stitches. So just one in each. and then end with an increase in that final stitch. So by the end of this row, you'll have eight single crochet. Chain one, turn your work. And now you're gonna put a single crochet in each of those eight stitches all the way along. And you're going to do four rows of eight single crochet. So eight single crochet along there, chain one, turn, eight, chain one, turn, eight, do that four times for four rows. And then I will meet you back when you've got your four rows of eight single crochet.
All right, so you've just done four rows of eight single crochet. So you're going to chain one, turn your work. Now you're going to decrease over the next two stitches. So to decrease, pop your hook in, come back like so, and go into the next one. You've got three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through all three loops. Then single crochet in the next four stitches. And then decrease over your last two stitches. So pop your hook in and into that last one. Three loops, yarn over, pull through all three. So you will have six stitches in total. Chain one, turn your work, decrease over the first two single crochet there single crochet in the next two stitches. And then decrease of your final two stitches, which will leave you with four. Chain one, turn. That's your first bunny ear formed. So now you're going to pop one single crochet in each of those four stitches. That last one could be a little bit tricky to see because of course it was a decrease. But go ahead and pop a single crochet into each stitch. Chain one, turn. And now you are going to do 17 more rows of four single crochet, chain one, turn. Do that 17 more times. And I will meet you back when you've got quite a long length of four single crochets in rows. Alrighty, so you've got your 18 rows total of four single crochet. That's including the first one that we did together. So when you're done, chain one and turn. And then into the very first stitch, you're going to do an increase. So that's two single crochet in the same stitch. A single crochet in the next two stitches. And then end on an increase in that final stitch. So you'll have six stitches in total. Chain one and turn. And again, increase into that first stitch. And then single crochet in the next four stitches. And then end with an increase in that very last stitch. So you will have eight stitches in total. Chain one and turn. Now you're going to do, just like we did over here, four rows of eight single crochet. So a single crochet in every one of those stitches along and chain one, turn for four rows.
And when you get to the top here, don't forget because you had two single crochet at this end, you want to do the same along this top edge too. It's going to be a little bit more tricky to see because of course these are our chains that we worked into. But you just want it to match the other end and then carry on. Keep going all the way around. So I'm pretty much back to where I started and to finish these off where well, you don't really want to do a slip stitch with your hook. So when you've finished your, la oh, your last stitch, cut yourself a long length of tail, pull this through and then get a needle. And what you want to do is with this needle, see this first single crochet that you did? Bring, oh, it's quite hard to do through the lens of a camera. You want to pop your needle under the loop, like so. And then you want to come under that last single crochet that you just did. I'm just popping it through and then pull it tight and you can see it gives you a much flatter edge rather than a straight slip stitch. So can you see that loop? It's this little loop here. It's almost like I've forced another mock stitch in there and then bring your needle through the top of that last single crochet that you did just to secure it down like so and then you can go ahead and weave in this end in through your stitches and this end and then you're ready to attach it to your teething ring so you've got your teething ring here and with this long loop of fabric. You want to fold it in half like that and feed this end through the teething ring and then you can see I'm putting my hands between. You want to grab the ears and pull it through like that. These tails out of the way. So you're almost securing it a bit like a luggage tie and you can neaten it up and arrange your ears like so. So you've got your little bunny ear teether. I'm happy to show you that one more time because I'm not sure how clear that was. Let me just trim this end a little bit because that was getting in the way. That's getting in the way. Obviously you will have woven in your ends and not be cheating like me. So with your loop of fabric, fold it in half, feed that through the ring, bring your hands up inside and you want to grab those ears and pull them through like that. And then you can fold this down to arrange it a bit more neatly. Pull it up. And then obviously make it look nice even out those edges. I'm just kind of tugging it and pulling it into place. And there you go. Super quick little project. Perfect for any emergency baby gifts. And you can get these teethers because you've used 100% cotton. 
You can get them wet, pop them in the freezer, and then they've got nice, cool, damp fabric for a teething baby to chew on. So it's not just the wooden bit they can chew on, it's actually your cotton ears as well. And of course you can remove these ears anytime you want, chuck them through the washing machine, and then just pop them back on. So I hope you enjoyed this little make. Give me a thumbs up if you did. Um, I would love it if you subscribed for all my future videos. And I shall see you again in another video very soon. Happy crocheting.